Dear students, in this class, we are going to see the regions of an antenna. In the last class, already we have seen the power radiated by an alternating current element and concluded that there are three fields of an antenna, two electric fields and one magnetic field. By taking that magnetic field, we are going to see the regions of an antenna now in this class. So, let me say very clearly, once again you see here, it is an alternating current element, ideal cos omega t. It is radiating the information towards the point P, which is at a distance r from this. And there are three fields of this antenna. One is in the radial direction ER, H5, H is in phi direction, and one more electric field in theta direction. And we know the expression for this H5. And taking this expression as the basis, we are going to see the regions of an antenna. So once again, I would like to tell you what is H5? H5 is equal to ideal sin theta by 4 pi, ideal sin theta by 4 pi multiplied by minus omega sin omega t dash divided by Rv plus cos omega t dash by Rv square, that is R square. So this is the expression for your H5. So, just by seeing this expression, immediately we can say there are two terms here. Let me say this is the first term and this is the second term. First term is inversely proportional to the distance r. So, the point P is at a distance r from this current element here. So, this is inversely proportional to r and whereas the second term is inversely proportional to r square. These are the two terms we are having. The term which is inversely proportional to the distance r is called as radiating field. This is called as radiating field. Inversely proportional to r square is called as, it is actually inductive field. So, this is radiative and this is inductive field. So, if you are taking these regions here, one is inversely proportional to distance r and other one is inversely proportional to r square. So, these are the two fields we are having, radiative field and inductive field. Now, let me say, if you take the second term here, it is inversely proportional to r square means, if r is very, very less, that means if the distance is very, very less, that means if you are taking a point which is close to your antenna, if r is very less, then it is a dominating factor. That means second term is going to dominate. So that's why it is called reactive field. It is inductive field. It is the field which is nearest to this antenna. That's why it is also called as near field. It is the dominating field at the surrounding of an antenna. Whenever the R is very, very small, it is a dominating factor. If R is more, that means at far distances, if you are going for the distances, away from this antenna like this, then this term is going to dominate. So this term is called as radiating field, which is also called as far field of an antenna. There are two fields here. One is the far field, other one is the near field. Otherwise you can say, according to the concept, it is a radiating field, it is an inductive field. And as far as your physics knowledge is concerned, you can call these terms as, this term which is away from this one is, Fraunhofer zone. Fraunhofer zone means where you can see the information, radiation. And whereas if you are taking this term, which is an inductive term, it is called as Fresnel zone. Fresnel zone. Fresnel zone means it is close to this antenna. It is away from the antenna. So that's why these are the things we have to learn for these two terms. So from the expression H5, I am telling there are two types of fields. One is far field, other one is the near field here. So now if you see this, it is actually radiating field and this is inductive field. Why it is called inductive field and why it is called reactive field, I would like to tell you. If you take an antenna, the region which is very close to this antenna there is no information at all. So that means the region 
which is surrounding this antenna is having no information. It is reactive. So that's why it is a reactive zone. I would like to tell you one thing, my dear friends. Suppose if you take some antennas in your town, some people are giving their buildings for rents for installing this type of antennas. And suppose if the Airtel people or some other people are installing the antenna at their houses and they are paying some rent, okay. So at that time, the people may be thinking that as we are very much closer to this antenna, we are getting much more information. No, you are not going to get that much of information. Frankly speaking, the people away from this antenna, they are enjoying the signal from this antenna. Very simple. If you take this class, now I am just teaching the class to all the students. The students who are actually very close to me, they are not going to hear my voice in a clear way because they are in which region? Personal zone. The students who are away from me, they are going to enjoy it because they are in the Fraunhofer zone. That means the nearest zone is called as Fresnel zone and the far zone is called as Fraunhofer zone. In Fraunhofer zone, you can expect the radiating field. But whereas in the Fresnel zone, you can end up have the inductive field. Inductive field means reactive field. It is the field where the energy is stored in the system. And it is the reason where the radiation of information is possible. Now I would like to tell you from this expression, as you are having two terms here, two fields here, I would like to tell you at what distance are both fields are equal. At what distance both fields are equal? Very simple. What is the magnitude of this? Omega by Rv. What is the magnitude of this? 1 by R square. So I want to find out the distance R where these two terms are equal. So I can say that omega by Rv is equal to 1 by R square. R and R will be cancelled here. I want R here. R is equal to V by R is equal to V by omega. What is V? V is equal to F lambda divided by what is omega? 2 pi F. 2 pi F. F and F will be cancelled here. Therefore, I can say R is equal to lambda by 2 pi and approximately equal to, if you take pi 3, then it will be approximately equal to lambda by 6. That means at a distance of R from this antenna, both fields are having the equal amplitudes and it is the most important one also because most of the times they are going to ask you in your gate examination and IES examination also. Sometimes they are giving the values, sometimes they are asking in a general way. So R is equal to lambda by 6. At a distance of R from this antenna, the both fields are equal amplitudes. That means they, may be, they are having equal amplitude at a distance R is equal to lambda by 6. So once you know this, then I would like to tell you what exactly these two terms, what are the two terms here? This term is actually inversely proportional to R and this is inversely proportional to R square. So if you take the second term first, what is H5? What is the second term here? Second term is equal to, that means you can say that this is the field, H5 is equal to, you can say this is ideal sin theta, ideal sin theta cos omega t dash divided by R square, 4 pi R square. If you remember exactly, what is this? What is this expression here? This expression is actually telling about the magnetic field of a magnetic field of a current element using Bayard Sabat law. Okay, here you can say ideal sin theta, forget about cos omega t dash. Take for the study fields, you are going to get ideal sin theta by 4 pi r square. So if you remember exactly, this is the expression for the magnetic field of a, a static charge using the Bayard Sabat law. Now if you are taking for a current element, then it is an alternating current element, that is the reason it is ideal cos omega t dash divided by 4 pi r square. What is this t dash? t dash is equal to t minus r by v. What is this r by v? It is nothing but a delayed, delayed time, retarded time. But whenever you are close to this antenna, most probably you can say r by v is negligible. If r is very, very small, I can say it can be neglected. Then you can say t dash is equal to t. That means, at the point closest to this antenna, there is no question of delaying of all these potentials. So whatever the expression I have written here, it is the same as the expression for the current element 
magnetic field of a current element using by arts of arts law so once you know this then you can understand your ideal current element is having h5 is equal to ideal sin theta into cos omega t dash by 4 by r square okay so now i would like to tell you the reasons of antenna using a small example so i want to take a candle as an example i would like to explain the reasons of antenna using a candle as an example let me say candle is an antenna now you are lighting up at one end and if you observe closely the region surrounding this candle is not having that much of illumination that means the information is almost zero it is the reactive region this entire region is reacting with the particles surrounding this antenna that is the reason you are not getting the illumination here so if you want to utilize this illumination of this candle and if you are going away from this antenna then definitely four or five persons are utilized in this region that means the region away from the candle is having uniform illumination here this region is called as fraunhofer zone the region around this candle is called as fresnel zone fresnel zone means which is not having radiation but whereas the fraunhofer zone means the radiation is maximum so in this way you can understand the regions of this antenna so if you are taking this the second term is actually telling about the region that is fresnel zone the region surrounding this antenna if you are taking the first term it is a radiative term so at a particular distance of r you are going to get your uniform illumination so that's why using candle as an example happily you can understand what is an antenna okay so now i would like to tell you the same concept using the basic antenna element that is nothing but a an off wave dipole okay now let me explain the reasons of an antenna by taking a dipole you know very well the dipole is having its maximum radiation at an angle of 90 degrees to this so if you take a dipole the radiation is maximum at an angle of 90 degrees to this it is also maximum in this direction so the radiation is maximum at an angle of 90 degrees here and minimum along its length there is no radiation along its length now if you take a dipole of the dimension d what is d here d means the maximum dimension of an antenna then it is also having different regions so if you see it clearly if you take r1 this entire region up to r1 it is called as the region surrounding this antenna the region surrounding this antenna is called as fresnel zone or otherwise you can say that it is reactive zone so what is the meaning of reactive zone whatever the radiation that is released from this antenna is encountering a problem of these reactions so as it is reacting with this nearest field radiation you cannot expect in this region that's why it is called as reactive region so in this region you are not going to get the signal from your antenna so if you are taking this if you are taking this radiation pattern here and this is an antenna at the edge of this antenna the region close to this antenna the radiation is very very less but after some time that means after the distance r1 it starts radiating from this the radiation takes place here so radiation starts after r1 here so that means if you are taking here up to this distance the radiation is very less but after this point the radiation starts so it will be started from this point and it is actually going up to this infrared distance here so if you are taking this region this region is called as a fraunhofer zone fraunhofer zone means far field the region away from this antenna but whereas it is a near field if you take one region in between in between region that means it is a near field and it is a far field in between you are also having one region and this region can be called as radiating near field that means once the antenna starts radiating you are dividing into more precisely into two regions one is the near field and other one is the far field this far field is called as fraunhofer zone where the radiation is independent of the distance it doesn't depend upon the distance from the antenna but whereas if you take your r1 
this R1 mathematically I can write down your R1 should be less than 0.63 root of d q by lambda. So what is d here? d means you can say that it is the maximum dimension of an antenna. Lambda means the wavelength of the signal. And when it is independent of the distance after R2. So R2 value I can say that R2 should be greater than 2 d square by lambda. 2 d square by lambda. So already you got this maximum limit as well as the minimum limit. So if you are taking this boundary and this boundary in between you are going to get your radiating near field. So radiating near field occurs between this R1 and as well as R2. So I can say that by taking a common this one here I can say it should be in between 0.63 root of dq by lambda should be less than R or less than 2d square by lambda. So, this region is existing in between these two limits. So, that is why I can tell you there are three regions now. One is the Fresnel zone, another one is radiating near field and the last one is Fraunhofer zone that is nothing but the far field of an antenna. So, here you are going to get a signal and here the information is very very less. That is the reason I told you very clearly the information very close to this antenna is very less. It is called Fresnel zone. Fresnel zone means the information is almost all minimum. It is a reactive zone. After some time, the radiation starts. It is radiating near field. After this one, you are going to get the maximum radiation here. So what do you mean by this radiation pattern? Radiation pattern is nothing but the graphical representation of the radiation with spatial coordinates. So that's why the radiation is taking place here. So I would like to conclude that whenever you are going to take an antenna, there are three regions here. One is the region surrounding this antenna. Surrounding this antenna is called as Fresnel zone, which is also called as the near field. But whereas the region away from this antenna is called a far field or a distance field, or otherwise you can say that it is a Fraunhofer zone. So that's why if you want to calculate the radiation pattern of any antenna, definitely you have to do have to conduct an experiment in the Fraunhofer zone. In the Fraunhofer zone only you are going to get. Suppose if you want to just calculate the radiation patterns of any antennas, you have to use the anthrax chambers. In that chamber, the transmitting antenna will be here and the receiving antenna will be in the far field of this antenna. Suppose if this is the transmitting antenna and if you are putting this receiving antenna very close to it, it is not going to get the radiation from this. Radiation will be maximum. Radiation will be excellent whenever you are taking a distance of 2d square by lambda. That is the reason in the antenna measurements also. Whenever you are calculating the pattern measurements or radiation patterns or whatever it may be, then the minimum distance between the transmitter and receiver should be 2d square by lambda. So what is D here? D means the maximum dimension of an antenna. So like that you have to understand that the region surrounding this antenna is not having information because it is a reactive region and always you should be very much happy with the signals whenever you are getting the signals from the Fraunhofer zone. That means you must be always in the distant field of an antenna. Okay. I hope you understood the regions of an antenna with our natural examples like a candle and one more example I have given you here. If you want to enjoy my class, definitely the students should have some distance from this transmitter then only they are going to get an excellent signals. Even suppose if you take a movie, if you go to a movie, if you want to enjoy that, the people who are in balcony, they can enjoy it. The people who are very much nearer to the screen, they are going to be confused because they are in the region of the fractional zone. If they want to enjoy this movie, even though it is a light signal or sound signal or whatever the signal it may be, always the best preference should be, always you should be in the Fraunhofer zone. That means away from an antenna. Okay. I hope you understood this lecture very well and thank you very much. Thank you.